Hello everybody, thanks for watching. This drawing demonstration is part two of our mark making project. So if you haven't watched the first mark making demo, be sure to do it before watching this one. You'll need to have all your supplies ready. And your materials will depend on the choices that you'll be making as you analyze your sampler pages and begin to build iterative drawings. Remember, iteration means a repetition of a process to generate a series of outcomes. So we will be making drawing iterations based on drawings we made before, all with the goal of completing a final large drawing that I call the field drawing. This step in the process is going to help us apply our drawing samples in creating a more intentional piece. We'll make a series of drawings to help us test our ideas without the intense time commitment of the field drawing. See the project instructions for more details. Also, at the end of this video, I will have examples of student drawings for both this second step as well as our finished field drawings. The field drawing is a non-objective drawing that is focused solely on filling the format with the chosen series of marks that you developed in the sampler drawings. We want to take our mark making exercises and apply them in a way to create a drawing that's just about marks. It's not a picture of anything. And like a field of wheat is made up of individual artistic streaks and spots or other marks that build into a single image. We do not want a focal point. We will allow the viewer to meander around the page, choosing their own path through the drawing. With this goal in mind, it is nice to experiment without having to get bogged down in such a big drawing. The first thing needed is to take our paper and draw a five by seven inch rectangle. You'll want to do this on three different sheets of paper. For my demo, I'm only showing one. Again, uh, check the assignment for specifics. I used a two H pencil on my ruler Try to be careful in measuring and draw the rectangle lightly and use only good craftsmanship. I want to now look over my sampler pages and see if there are any possibilities for taking one of my experiments and pushing it further. I've decided to try and take this square and repeat the process of that drawing sample and make it a larger and more complex piece. I remembered that it was based on freehand parallel lines that changed in thickness and density due to the pressure I put on the pencil as I drew. So, I'm going to fill this whole rectangle with that repeating mark. I am staying with drawing the line somewhat straight, but here is where I can start to be more creative. I could have done my lines wavy or in a circular pattern or at a diagonal or some other random placement. But as I worked, I noticed that this secondary pattern that starts to emerge as I get more lines was really interesting. It kind of resembles a wood grain pattern, something that I didn't really anticipate, but was a nice surprise. And as with all your projects, you'll want to use your best craftsmanship. I am trying to keep my hand out of my drawings so that I don't smear all my hard work. You might want to use a second sheet of paper under your hand to protect your drawing. So here's my first drawing beyond the sampler, and I'm pretty happy with it. I would now repeat this process and do more test drawings before tackling the final field project. I wanted to show you a few examples of student work for both the drawings beyond the sampler and the field drawings. These are all done in a variety of media and technique. See if you can guess how each drawing may have been accomplished, and note the variety in the execution of each piece. Now 
Now here are a few final field drawings. These are larger drawings, 16 by 20 inches on a full sheet of 18 by 24 paper. This project always yields the most interesting solutions and I love how students put so much time and effort into these creative solutions. Well, I hope this was helpful for you, everybody, and thanks for watching.